Let's go to that breaking news now from Bay Harbor Islands. Two people are shot this afternoon. And police just wrapping up a news conference. Local 10's Janine Stanwood is live with the latest on this developing story. Janine. This was an argument, a shooting, and now an all-out investigation. All of this, according to the town manager, unfolding right here in a parking lot outside of this apartment complex, which actually happens to be right across the street from the Bay Harbor Islands Police Department. The town manager says one man shot two others. Everybody sped away. The victims then drove themselves to North Miami. We have video of that scene. You can see they were in this black Mercedes. We're told they ran inside the urgent care in that strip mall asking for help. A witness describes the commotion. Take a listen. I see two male, male, uh, male guys yeah, came inside yeah. the store, or came inside the, uh, the medical facility next door. And they seemed to seem like they got, yeah, like they, they were wounded. They are wounded real bad, and they entered inside the medical facility inside. And uh, then they were transported they were from there. Transported. They transported. The, the, the doctors inside called called the uh, ambulance, and they were transported. Did, were they saying anything? No, they were saying, "Oh, I got shot! I got shot!" As for the shooter or shooters, we are working with Broward Sheriff's, Miami Dade, and Aventura Police to find them. At this point, we are not sure if they are still armed. But we do know that there is no imminent danger in Bay Harbor Islands. So that was the town manager saying that they are working to find the shooter. No description of the shooter, except that they were in an expensive car. That's really the only description right now that the town manager is giving of this shooter. You can see this is still an area that is blocked off right here, just across the street from the Bay Harbor Islands Police Department. It's an ongoing situation. We are told the two men who were taken to Aventura Hospital, one is in surgery, but they are expected to make a full recovery. We're in Bay Harbor Islands. I'm Janine Stanwood, Local 10 News. Okay, Janine, thank you. Lauder Hill Fire today tweeting out this incredible picture of a FedEx delivery van on fire. This happened at the 2800 block of Northwest 56th Avenue. No injuries reported here, but some people will not be getting their packages. Wow, what a photo. All right, let's turn our attention to our weather and talk to Betty. Today has been a nice day, Betty, but what do we have in store for the weekend? We're going to dampen it up a bit. We are going to return to scattered showers in the area. We've got a few we're watching out there now, most of which are over the Atlantic waters at this point. So Miami doing okay for the moment. 85 degrees is the temperature. Winds from the east-southeast at 14 miles per hour, and that east-southeasterly flow is sending some of these showers over the Atlantic waters toward our shoreline. We see quite a few as we look off day and just off the upper keys, some outright downpours there. So they're essentially moving from the east southeast, I'll say, toward the west northwest. And of course, we see this showing up on the radar, that return uh, gliding down. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'll be trying to figure out what that is. I don't think that's a rain shower, but this is definitely rain just off the upper keys. And it looks as though this is poised to move in over the next couple of hours. So between now and seven, a few showers, nine o'clock tonight. Yes, we could have some showers around and we will still be keeping watch over Hurricane Delta as it moves ashore along the southwest Louisiana coast. So that northern eyewall already pushing in. You can see how the rainfall is centrally covering up a stretch of I-10 and are the rain bands reaching all the way up toward Alexandria up in Monroe, getting into some rainfall as well. So this is where the hurricane force winds, the storm surge, and the potential for flooding is certainly coming through for this evening and into tonight. We'll show you this is the potential wind gust they'll see. So right where it's making the landfall, hurricane force winds expected. And then as the system moves over land, it weakens. But it does look as though overnight, even areas of central and northern Louisiana could be in line for some tropical storm force winds. The story for South Florida as we get in our, into our Saturday, Winds from the east southeast, scattered showers, and then on Sunday we'll get some scattered showers and storms developing as well. Temperatures are going to march up toward the upper 80s tomorrow and right about 90 on Sunday. And we get into a new work week, still looking at the chance for some scattered showers and storms at times. Calvin? Okay, Betty, thanks a lot. It's only been a week since Miami Dade reopened schools, and we are learning of multiple infected students and employees. And now the superintendent is talking about what's being done to disinfect those schools and keep everyone safe. All new at six. And crime on camera here at Intruder smashing windows and leaving blood all over a Jewish center. We're hearing from the leader of the congregation coming up.
Book of Ten Sports with Will Manso. The Heat are just a few hours away from trying to save their season. They'll face elimination for the first time since entering the NBA bubble three months ago. Hard to believe it's been so long, but here they stand now and game four was lost. There's no doubt that having Bam Adebayo back on the floor helped. Bam was a force on defense, helping to slow down Anthony Davis and helping to rebound. As for motivation for tonight's game five, Eric Spolscher went old school, invoking Teddy Roosevelt's famous man in the arena speech. I just, I don't think you could understand unless you're in the locker room. Um, so I'm not really going to, you know, waste time trying to explain to everybody. We are here for a purpose. We are trying to compete for a title. That has not changed. And our players, our guys are the ones in this arena. Marred by sweat, tears, blood. And that's right where they are meant to be. Spo going old school. Whatever works to motivate his team, if they can win game five tonight at the NBA Finals right here on Local 10. Our coverage begins at 8 o'clock. Our special countdown to tip-off show to get you ready. We'll preview the matchup, how the Heat can get it done. Game time is at 9. Stay with us following the game for Local 10 News, a complete wrap of the game and of a full day of news. Now, Spo clearly not lacking for motivational words for his team. Expect them to come out inspired the Lakers should be too. They're one win away from their 17th title in franchise history. Yeah, this is far from over. I mean, we have the personnel to, to make a run at least, huh? Don't you think? I, I mean, if you think about winning three in a row against the Lakers, it's a daunting task. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's yeah. hard to do. But if you think of it step by step, win tonight, force a game six, win a game six, force a game seven, then yeah. the Heat certainly have the guys and the motivation to do it. And they, they had a, a close game last game, so it is certainly possible. It was right there. It's right there for the taking. They just didn't execute down the stretch. So one day at a time. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Will. Well, here's a look at some of the stories we have coming up on Local 10 News at 530. A demolition debacle in Hollandale Beach when a front end loader falls four stories with a worker inside. We'll tell you how he's doing coming up in our live report. And budget shortfalls leading to tough decisions about police at Miami City Hall. Cops will either not get a raise, so some of them will lose their jobs. The police union says no to both. We'll tell you how the police chief is trying to make peace. Plus, President Trump calling to personally thank local members of law enforcement today after he got a major endorsement. Local 10 News at 530 gets started in just a couple of minutes.
Local 10 News starts right now. Right now at 5.30, we're hearing from witnesses to a shocking demolition drop in Hallandale Beach. A front end loader was being lifted to the fourth floor of a building being knocked down when things suddenly went horribly wrong. And that heavy machine fell all the way to the ground with a worker inside. Local 10's Jeff Wines here is live with what went wrong here. Jeff. Nicole, several people were standing right here watching the whole thing, and they are calling it an absolute miracle. It happened right there in that building. This building is set to be demolished. It is on A1A south of Hallandale Beach Boulevard. Just after 10 o'clock this morning, a worker up there on the fourth floor inside a front end loader strapped in when he plunges four floors down. This is how the front end loader landed. The machine plunged four floors, 40 feet down, and strapped inside a construction worker in his 30s. I was standing down below, just happened to be looking up. Gary Couch has been watching the demolition of this building. It's amazing watching him go end over end like this with a green shirt on. End over end like this, I says, oh, that's not a good one. Big bang, big crash. But I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was trying to yell through to see if he's all right. It was just after 10 o'clock this morning. This front end loader was on a platform. It was being lifted up to the fourth floor by a crane. When they were trying to get it into the balcony there, they were having a hard time, it seemed like. Eyewitnesses tell us once it got to the fourth floor balcony, a worker got on and in. And then all of a sudden, Boom, it came down. That construction worker was taken to Aventura Medical Center with only minor injuries. This afternoon, an investigator from OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, was on scene questioning fellow workers on this site as to exactly what happened. Started praying for the guy. I said, it'll be a miracle if that guy lives. Amazing he lived. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, and very, very lucky today. Nobody was down here at the bottom when that actually fell. There was a crane here earlier that has been removed. We did contact OSHA. They say it is too early to release any information right now. No names have been released, but again, the injuries here today, luckily, only minor. We're live in Hallandale Beach. Jeff Weins here, Local 10 News. Thank goodness he's okay. All right, thank you, Jeff. Well, a major endorsement today for President Trump, who made a special phone call to show his thanks. Local 10's Andrew Perez, live to explain this one. Andrew. Well, everyone gathered inside this police supply warehouse in Hialeah. Safe to say, though, these officers were not expecting a phone call from the president. Hello, Hi, President. Hi. An unexpected phone call after a glowing endorsement in Hialeah. You know, especially in Florida, it means so much to me. I really appreciate it. You do a great job. Really courageous people, and it's an honor. Oh. Thank you, Mr. President. The Florida Police Chiefs Association officially endorsing President Trump. Former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi on hand to accept that endorsement. He couldn't hang up, though, without a quick jab. They're finding out Sleepy Joe's not the answer. He's not the answer. <laughs> he believes in our law enforcement. He believes in our first responders and our great military. And that's why this endorsement is so personal to him. It's another push to attract more law enforcement officials. Policing and policy has been a big part of the 2020 presidential election overall. Sometimes when you lose morale, it's hard to, to keep your troops uh, kind of uh, going. <laughs> That sentiment felt elsewhere, as seen in the Faith in Blue Solidarity Ride, which traveled through South Florida showing support for police. The event wasn't political, but an effort involving religious communities and officers showing support for each other and riding police station to police station. Everybody agrees that some of the examples that we have seen of, of bad things occurring, everybody agrees that that stuff needs to be uh, dealt with and reformed. 99.9% .9 of these officers wake up every day put on their uniform and go out there to protect our community. That caravan is something that's happening all across the country to support police right now. The police association in that story, by the way, is the third largest in the state of Florida. It's the latest in Hialeah. I'm Andrew Perez, Local 10 News. Thank you, Andrew. Miami City commissioners having to make a tough choice when it comes to funding the police department. With revenues down, they either have to cut jobs or a proposed raise for officers. And the police union is rejecting both options. Local 10's Christina Vasquez is live with the chief's reaction. Christina. 
Well, he is playing a role in helping all of these parties find some common ground as negotiations continue. We had a $20 million surplus going into COVID, and we finished this year with a $25 million deficit. So to balance a budget amid a pandemic and its related impacts to city revenue. All in favor of the motion on the floor say aye. 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 A proposal to cut 66 Miami police officers. Here's police chief George Kalina. But there's also positions that are being frozen that, you know, we're not filling that current vacancies that we have. So when you combine those two numbers, the, the number is actually bigger. It's closer to 100 officers uh, that we wouldn't have to be at our full staffing levels. The chief said due to attrition and retirement, they are never at a full staffing level. That said. But that's a big number and it is an alarming number. And I don't want to frighten anyone we're going to put officers on the street to answer calls for service. So response time would not change. What would? The manpower they could designate to other operations like additional gang units. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez says they did propose a plan for go one of two upcoming pay raises to keep current salaries and those 66 police officers. But he says Miami's fraternal order of police refused the offer. We've had very productive discussions with the, with the labor union, with the FOP over the last few days. And I think we'll have something by the end of next week, beginning of the week after. I don't believe the union wants to lose any officers, obviously. I, I don't believe the city wants to lose any officers. We don't want anyone to lose their jobs, and we want Miami to remain a very safe city. As for the FOP, I reached out yesterday. I reached out again today, and no one has responded to my inquiries for a statement for this story. Reporting live for you, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. We know you're on it. Thank you, Christina. We are tracking Hurricane Delta, expected to make landfall soon as a Category 2 storm. Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross joins us live now with the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Brian. And Nicole and Louis, the uh, strongest winds with this hurricane are already onshore. We're waiting on the center, which is the official landfall uh, designation. But there is the eye wall right there. It's already gone past that coastal highway there in southern Louisiana where so much damage was done with uh, Hurricane Laura. And those strong winds are pushing on farther to the north. On the wider view, we can see the eye. Now, the eye is something like this. It's a big eye, and so the center of the eye is about 35 miles as of 5 o'clock south of Cameron, and when that center goes over the coast, that's official landfall. But the worst weather is in that eye wall where the strongest winds are already now pushing ashore and pushing the storm surge ashore, so it is happening in Louisiana right now. Here's the update from the Hurricane Center as of 5 o'clock, 105 mile-an-hour winds in that circulation somewhere is the estimate, Category 2 hurricane. It's certainly not going to intensify anymore. It probably will continue to weaken uh, a little bit here now that the weather is on shore. What's happening is there's a big dip in the jet stream out to the west of it here. Lots of dry air. You see the oranges there. That's kind of getting injected in there and you can kind of make out that the storm is getting kind of ragged looking. Good news is that's a weakening process. So that's good. It's also going to go over some cool water right here. Temperatures there below 75. So cooling off and then weakening pretty quickly to a tropical storm as it gets up into the center of Louisiana uh, overnight. So there are the winds. Look how big they are there. But here's where they're really pushing the water ashore. About eight feet right now above the uh, high tide level right there on the west end of that bay called Vermilion Bay. Same place that Laura hit just six weeks ago. Those poor folks that live down there to the right of where both of these storms are coming ashore. Look at those two tracks. Just incredible in the same season. And it has been a record-setting season, of course, producing storm surge once again, 7 to 11 feet forecast right now measured, as I said, at 8 feet. We've had nine storms make landfall here in the next about hour and a half or so. We should have one more, and that would be a record 10 landfalling named storms in one hurricane season. And that hurricane season, of course, is 2020, along with so many other things this year. 
All right, guys, that's it. Back to you. What a year it has been. Thank you, Brian. The pandemic will be shutting down Broadway for at least a full year. All 41 Broadway theaters have been closed since March 12th, and today ticket sales were suspended for all New York performances through May 30th of 2021. That is affecting nearly 97,000 people. Productions have a nearly $15 billion impact on the city. Theater goers holding tickets for dates through May 30th of next year should contact their point of purchase for details on exchanges and refunds. And we're seeing South Florida parents stepping up when it comes to making sure there is plenty of PPE in schools as they begin to reopen. Following more COVID cases reported by Miami-Dade schools, the group Aventura Cares is donating more than 1,000 face shields to students. The shields, along with hundreds of small containers of hand sanitizer, were delivered to Aventura Waterway School and Aventura Charter. The donation made to keep students and staff members safe as they all head back into the classroom this week. Face shield is an extra precaution and extra safety, and we want to protect our teachers. We want to protect the seniors in our community and everyone who's now back in school. They'll be expanding and out in the community. What a great initiative too, mm -hmm. right? Well, there is some counterfeit cash out floating around in Florida that is so good. Even the banks can't tell the difference. These bogus Benjamins can even pass the pen test. We'll explain how they finally figured out it was funny money all new at six. A bloody break in caught on camera, an intruder smashing windows at a Jewish center in an anti Semitic rampage. We're going to show you how the congregation is reacting. That's coming up next. Plus, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer has plenty to say about the arrest of more than a dozen people in a plot to kidnap her and incite a civil war. Let's serve a live look outside all of our weather cameras right now. A beautiful South Florida evening on tap, but there is rain in the forecast. Betty Davis will be next with what your weekend weather is looking like.
Some of South Florida's most popular clubs and night spots are reopening just in time for the holiday weekend. And just this afternoon, Miami-Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez is talking about relaxing the countywide curfew. Local 10's Christian De La Rosa live with more on this. Christian. Yeah, and nightclub owners and promoters we've been talking to are welcoming the news of a possible new later curfew, but they're still saying they're going to be extra cautious and extra careful. From club space in downtown Miami to twist on Miami Beach, club owners and promoters telling Local 10 News they are gearing up for what may be their biggest weekend in seven months. Cameras still not allowed inside, but this is how club space will be laid out in this phase three new normal. No dance floor, just tables by reservation only. Telling Anstey clubbers and ravers we missed you and reminding they must wear masks and avoid contact. At Twist, the iconic gay club's owner telling us his staff will only open at 25% capacity, far below the 50% allowed under county orders. And when it comes to the county-wide 11 p.m. curfew, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez says he's pushing it back. The city of Miami will enforce the county-wide curfew beginning at midnight pushing it back an hour. As you know, I have disagreed with the curfew for quite some time. Just this afternoon, Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos Jimenez saying, quote, today I met with the county's public health experts to determine if we can start the curfew at midnight instead of the current 11 p.m. We will monitor this weekend's testing results and hospitalizations. And if all remains stable, we plan to move the county-wide curfew to midnight until 6 a.m. starting Monday. So nightclub owners and promoters are telling us they're still planning on closing their doors tonight at 11 p.m. Regardless of what the mayor of the city of Miami, Francis Suarez, is saying that he won't be enforcing the curfew until midnight tonight. Also, authorities tell us they'll be out in force uh, giving out citations and fines to people that aren't wearing their masks and following the rules. We're live in Miami Beach. I'm Christian De La Rosa, Local 10 News. One step forward for clubs. Thank you, Christian. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer was on GMA this morning talking about the arrest of several men in an alleged terror plot to kidnap and kill her. These are the types of things you hear from groups like ISIS. This is not a militia. It is a domestic terror organization. We need to call it out, and people of goodwill on both sides of the aisle need to stand up and do the right thing here because this should not stand in the United States of America in 2020. More than a dozen people were arrested, and the governor is claiming President Trump is complicit. In a series of tweets last night, President Trump blasted Gretchen Whitmer for not saying thank you for the arrest and slammed her performance as governor before condemning the violence. Whitmer also responded to the tweets, asking the White House to tone down the inflammatory rhetoric that she said helped spark the alleged plot. On Wednesday night, FBI agents raided a home in Michigan that reportedly served as a training center for the militia group allegedly behind the kidnapping plot. According to a federal complaint, there were plans to to storm Michigan's Capitol building to try Whitmer for treason and to conduct firearms and tactical training. And these are five of the six suspects that appeared in federal court yesterday. Seven other men face a variety of state firearms and terror charges. A New York man now facing hate crime charges after he was caught on surveillance video vandalizing a Jewish center. This happened Sunday night at the Shore Parkway Jewish Center. He can be seen yanking on a temporary tent set up for outside prayers before he used a flagpole to shatter more than a dozen windows and climb inside. The intruder cut himself on the broken glass and bled all over the place. He also broke two menorahs at one point he could be seen wrapped in the Israeli flag. Neighbors heard him shouting anti-Semitic slurs and called police who arrested him on the spot. We welcome people. We have classes. We have people who are Jews and non-Jews who come to our classes. We try to learn from each other. Why would you do this? Police say the vandal lives nearby and is now facing several hate crime charges. The cost of the damage estimated to be between $75,000 and $100,000. Let's turn out to weather and talk to Betty. Our day was very nice today, but things are going to change a little bit for the weekend, right, yeah, Betty? What's the weekend look like? Throw a few showers out there. Not necessarily a weekend wash out, out though, so that's the good news. Outside right now, our Hollywood Beach camera, we keep going back to this one because it does look so good as we see people out on the broadwalk enjoying this day. Uh, watching out for rip currents, though. We've got winds from the east-southeast at 15 miles per hour, temperatures mid-80s in Miami. 
I do have some rain to talk about. It's over the Atlantic waters from now, but for more and more, uh, we're likely going to see these downpours closing in on the upper keys. So uh, well, I would say within the hour, we may have some rain reaching Boca Chita Key, crossing over toward uh, Biscayne Bay. We'll watch Key Biscayne, even Miami Beach, too. We'll keep an eye on things for downtown Miami as well, just to see exactly where that shower ends up. It's generally pushing up toward the west northwest. Meantime, off the Broward coastline, we've got one or two showers and even this little feature right here. I don't think that's a shower. Haven't quite figured out what that is running towards say Surfside. But either way, the bottom line on our forecast for tonight, it may not be rain everywhere at the same time, but we do have room for a few showers out there. Meantime, Delta Hurricane Delta making that landfall as we speak. Uh, it's coming in along the southwest Louisiana coast dumping plenty of rainfall, bringing the wind toward that area. That system moves up toward the Tennessee Valley as we move through Saturday. The story for us this weekend will be moisture around and moisture that lingers into early next week. Even as we track the leading edge of a cold front working down the peninsula next Tuesday, some drier air behind it. These warm colors tell us that we're still going to have moisture to play with over our area to support to support some uh, scattered showers out there. Heading to the beach tomorrow, water temperature off Miami around 83 degrees. The rip current risk is moderate. Taking the boat out, small craft exercise caution. Uh, seas running about two feet off Miami-Dade and Broward. Here's a look at Hurricane Delta, that northern eye wall pushing on in. Of course, we'll keep you apprised when the landfall happens officially. Thankfully, nothing like that happening in the forecast for us this weekend. Nicole? That's good news. Thanks, Betty. A Japanese theme park has come up with a creative way to boost attendance during the pandemic by turning its Ferris wheel into an online workspace. The park just outside Tokyo is selling an amusement workstation package. For 18 bucks, guests can rent a poolside workstation with internet and outlets and have the option to spend an hour remotely working from inside the Wi-Fi equipped Ferris wheel. There are also other attractions to enjoy. But I mean, isn't it work? <laughs> I don't think they're working at all. Nobody's they're telling working. their boss they're working, but no. how do you do a Zoom call from up on a Ferris uh, wheel? Ferris Can wheel. you imagine? Yeah. Well. Good luck with that. Anyway, whatever works. Hey, a heartwarming story of kindness that saved a wild animal from South Carolina. Tabitha Aldrich says she's been homeless for eight years, but when she saw a baby squirrel about to get hit by a car, she gave a little food she had just to help save its life. We tried to release him here at Memorial Park, but he just kept on following us. <laughs> they shared bits of their honey bun with him to keep him alive. And between the sugar and the carbs, it was it was enough to keep him up until I could get there. It makes me feel good that I was able to help Rocky out. Oh, Rocky the squirrel. How could you not help him out? Look at that cute little face. The squirrel named Rocky is healthy and alive, all because of Aldrich's kindness. Rocky has six more weeks of rehab, and then he will be ready to be released back Ooh. into the wild. No doubt he'll be looking for her because squirrels yeah. never forget acts of kindness like so that. So little, too, has yeah. she spotted him. But you know, when you pay acts of kindness forward like that, it yeah, all comes, comes back, back to you. So it's beautiful. 100%. Great story. Another busy Friday in the local tent newsroom. Here are some of our top stories at 6 today. A crane catastrophe in one Broward neighborhood today. The boom tearing right through the roof of this home. And this wasn't the only big crash involving heavy machinery. COVID cases climbing in Miami-Dade schools as thousands of students go back to class in Broward. We're going to show you what's being done to keep everybody safe. But first, we'll explain why one South Beach resident is training for the longest run of his life when local 10 news comes right back.
Welcome back. Running for a good cause. Meet Laszlo Perringer, the South Beach resident, getting ready to run almost 3,000 miles cross country from Los Angeles to New York. His journey began about two years ago as a way to lose weight. And last weekend, he ran over 100 miles on Tamiami Trail from South Beach to Naples. Wow. I'm really excited because it's an it's, it's a adventure, but I encourage everybody to go out and do something like this in their life. Because uh, it, it's something when you finish it, nobody can take it away from you. Proud is an understatement. Um, this is like a huge, huge thing, and I'm beyond proud. I, 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 there are no words to describe. It's, it's just an amazing thing. Wow, I can't even run around the block. <laughs> Laszlo is training every day. You can follow his journey on his Instagram page at Laz Runs. Go, Laz, go. That'll do it for us at 530. Time now for the news at 6. Developing now more COVID-19 cases in Miami-Dade schools as Broward kids return to class. Students and now a school worker testing positive for COVID. I'm Roy Ramos in Miami Gardens with what the superintendent says is being done. Those cases coming as thousands of Broward kids return to the classroom. I'm Hatsovella with what every parent should know. Also developing a crane suddenly crashing down on a Fort Lauderdale home. And you got to come home, some train fell. Breaking now, Category 2 Hurricane Delta storming ashore on the Gulf Coast. It's do or die for the Heat. I'm Will Mansell with what they must do to beat LeBron and the Lakers. It was counterfeit. Bogus Benjamins. Why police are so concerned about these counterfeits. Plus, extra horsepower on the highway, but there's much more to this story. The news starts now. Good evening. We begin tonight with the developing news. COVID-19 cases growing at Miami-Dade schools. This is Broward students return to class for the first time in months. Our Hatzavella just talked to Broward superintendent, but we begin with Roy Ramos live in Miami Gardens. Roy. Nicole, and we did get a chance to speak to the superintendent for Miami-Dade Public Schools. He did confirm that there are four schools that had positive cases of COVID-19. Right here at Charles David Weich Elementary School, they had a positive case. And parents I spoke with tell me that they were a little on the fence with sending their kids back into the classroom. A remaining 40,000 students returning to Miami-Dade Public Schools for in-class learning. This, the final phase of the district's reopening plan, but within the first week of classes in a brick-and-mortar school, and there have already been several confirmed positive cases of COVID-19. Uh, we now have four cases across Miami-Dade. Superintendent Alberto Carvalho identifying Point Siena Elementary, who had an employee test positive. Three students also contracting the virus who attend Charles David Weich Elementary, Neil Hurston Elementary, and William Lehman Elementary Schools. We initiated the contact tracing process and then we messaged everyone in the school as well. Those in contact told to quarantine for 14 days and not to return until they've been cleared by the health department. Within the schools, a thorough cleaning with signs indicating the campus was electrostatically disinfected. I hear that cases are still getting reported, so is a, I think it's a little premature. Parents I spoke with still concerned with sending their little ones back to school, worried they may be unable to follow all the rules. We talk to them, make sure to keep his hands clean and not touch everybody's stuff. This week has been quite the whirlwind. The teachers union announcing there are more cases involving a total of six schools and are now asking for parents to step forward and help any way they can. If you have additional supplies that you can spare, send them to your teachers. They need disinfecting wipes. They need spray. Um, they need rubbing alcohol. And we have just learned that parents at Eugenia B. Thomas K-8 through in Doral did receive a robocall informing them of a COVID-19 case. Right now, we are reaching out to the district to find out if they are looking into that case. That case will likely have to be confirmed by the Florida Department of Health. As we gather more details from them, we will be sure to let you know. For now, here in Miami Gardens, Roy Ramos, Local 10 News. Okay, and those new COVID-19 cases reported as thousands of students went back to class in Broward. Our team coverage continues now with Local 10 News reporter Hatzel Vela with more. Hatzel. So, Calvin, naturally here in Broward County, everybody watching, seeing what's happening down in Miami-Dade. A lot of concern from teachers and parents, but the superintendent today telling us that the right protocols and people are in place. 
More than 12,000 students in pre-K, kindergarten, first and second grade returned to the classroom today. That's about 6% of the total Broward schools population. A little bit scared, I gotta say, um, but I think it's necessary. I think they really need it. We were inside Plantation Park Elementary as students moved through the hallways, passing sanitizing stations and social distancing markers. So what is three plus seven? Ten! In classrooms, students were spaced apart. The same in the cafeteria with small groups being brought in at lunchtime and students eating in individual desks. Not an easy task, according to the teachers' union. Our teachers have expressed that it was um, one of the hardest days that they've had in their careers. With the pandemic still very much a reality, the superintendent hopes to have a nurse in every school by early next week. They will be charged with checking out sick students. We'll handle each situation um, as we need to uh, and appropriately, uh, classroom by classroom, school by school. But he says everyone has to play a role in and out of the classroom. Here's a message to parents. Do those health and wellness checks in the morning and then please be cognizant of the interactions your child is having out in a community. So here in Broward, they're counting on 5,700 rapid tests that they just received yesterday from the state. The superintendent reminding us this is a staggered approach, a return that's going to continue next Tuesday and Thursday. For now, reporting live in Fort Lauderdale, I'm Hatzel Vela, Local 10 News. Parents playing a role in and out of the classroom. Thanks a lot, Hatzel. Developing now a shooting in Bay Harbor Islands. We're told this started as an argument outside of an apartment complex and ended with two men getting shot. The victims drove themselves to urgent care and were eventually taken to Aventura Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. The shooter got away in an expensive sports car. Right now, firefighters are still on the scene of a crane calamity, a giant crane suddenly crashing down on a home below, but it could have been so much worse. Local 10 News reporter Amy Viteri is live on the scene in Fort Lauderdale for us tonight. Amy. Well, exactly what caused this is still officially under investigation, but we are told by crews out here on the scene that the ground somehow gave way under that truck mounted crane and sent it onto its side. Meanwhile, it has taken three massive tow trucks to try to get this thing upright again. This giant truck mounted crane was supposed to be lifting a shed over a home into the backyard when instead it toppled over, crashing onto the home next door. My neighbor called me, Alex, very friendly, very nice to call me. I uh, said, you got to come home. Some train fell. I said, what? I don't like. So I told my mom to check the ring cameras. She saw everything that's going on, caused me hysterically crying. It happened on Northeast 57th Street in Fort Lauderdale just before noon. The family that lives here was out of town and no one was hurt. Fire officials telling us it appears somehow the ground gave way, sending the truck onto its side, bringing the crane down with it. From Sky 10, you can see the crane on the roof of the home and power lines behind it. Our initial reports were that the, uh, the grandmother was inside the house. Uh, if anybody would have been inside this house, it, this would have been a completely different story. Crews able to get all three dogs and two very frightened cats safely out of the house as they began the hours long process of trying to remove the crane. It took three tow trucks several hours to secure the entire structure and get it upright. But again, fire crews here are telling us there is extensive damage to the inside of that home. Additionally, power did have to be turned off to several homes in this neighborhood because the crane ended up on top of those power lines. However, they tell us based on the damage they're seeing here, it is extremely fortunate that no one was seriously hurt. We're live in Fort Lauderdale tonight. Amy Viteri, Local 10 News. That is the great news. Thanks, Amy. That wasn't the only workplace crash today. Just hours earlier, a worker was inside a front end loader when it suddenly fell four floors from a building that is being demolished in Hollandale Beach. Witnesses could not believe what they saw. Big bang, big crash. But I was like, I couldn't believe it. It's amazing watching him go end over end like this with a green shirt on. End over end like this. I says, oh, that's not a good one. Incredibly, the worker only suffered minor injuries. He was taken to Aventura Medical Center. An investigation is underway to figure out how this could have happened. A FedEx van erupting in flames in Lauder Hill. Fire officials tweeting out this photo of the fiery scene. This happened at 2800 Northwest 56th Avenue. No word on what caused the fire, but no injuries were reported and many packages were saved. Well, it could be the last chance for Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. They're down three games to one, as we all know, to LeBron and the Lakers. 
who look to end the series tonight. And we know this Heat team will come out fighting in a game you can see right here and only on Local 10 tonight. Sports Director Will Manso joining us now with what they will have to do to make a comeback, Will. <laughs> Let's hope it starts tonight. The Heat are hoping for that comeback of the ages to win that championship trophy. But before they can win three in a row, they have to win tonight. We're in it for the right now. The right now for the Heat is a do or die game five. But Eric Spolster wants his players to understand this is all about winning the next game. And they have a firm belief they'll do that tonight. Our guys are the ones who are out there in the arena marred by dust, blood, sweat, and tears. Our guys are the ones out there. Uh, 28 other teams uh, aren't out there, and everybody else is basically on their comfortable couches spectating uh, on this one. Strong words from Spo, but he feels strongly that his team isn't ready to spectate just yet. We had a chance, um, and that, that we, we still believe. You know, like I said, they're, they're writing off. They're writing us off. Um, you know, everybody's doubting us. Aside from that belief, what also matters is Miami needing to make the adjustments. You know, we go back and, and we're looking at stuff and we're correcting stuff and we're like, damn, you know, we see it on film. We just got to be able to see these things in the game. But I, I got to win. I got to know me putting my body through all of this, my guys putting their bodies through all of this. It's for something. Being here for 90, however many days, it was for something. Because if it wasn't, I would be really pissed off at the end of this day. An angry Jimmy Butler, but hopefully after a win, because they need three in a row, only one place if they can get game five that you can watch it. And that's right here on Local 10. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock. We've got a lot of fun on our account on the tip-off. Not only a preview of the game, we're joined by Marlins outfit, the Lewis Brinson. Talking about the Marlins season and also his love for the Heat. He's a huge Heat fan. Then the game follows the countdown to tip off. And then, of course, Local 10 News after that. Listening to the Heat, it's clear that confidence is not a problem. Will that confidence, though, translate into the win? We will find out in just a few hours. Nicole? Yes, we will. We'll be watching. Thanks, Will. And right now, Category 2 Hurricane Delta is slamming ashore on the Gulf Coast. You are looking live at Lake Charles, Louisiana, where they are already seeing strong rain and heavy wind gusts. And this hurricane is especially dangerous because there is still a great deal of debris left behind from Hurricane Laura. The sustained wind force from Delta is expected to send that debris flying everywhere. Delta is expected to make landfall very soon in Louisiana. Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis is here with more. That's right, Nicole. That center of circulation is now 25 miles south-southeast of Cameron, Louisiana. And I think we're starting to see that weakening trend start as well, although it still is very strong. Last hour, winds of 105 miles per hour. Now maximum sustained wind showing at 100 miles per hour as it's moving north-northeast at 14 miles per hour and you can see how all of the rain is just lashing parts of Louisiana that northern eye wall has moved on in now it's just a matter of getting that center pushing on up and over shore ashore to get the official landfall declared but what we're looking at is it's going to continue to weaken as it interacts with land in fact early Saturday morning notice this forecast icon has it over central Louisiana tropical storm at that point and then it continues to spin down as it heads up toward the Tennessee River Valley squeezing out moisture. Calvin. Okay, Betty, thanks a lot. Miami Dade County appears ready to take another step in its reopening effort. Mayor Carlos Jimenez says that if coronavirus positivity rates remain stable this weekend, he will move the curfew back to midnight starting Monday. This will be welcome news for bars and restaurants that have had to close up shop at 11 p.m. And today, the state reported nearly 400 new COVID-19 cases in Miami-Dade with a positivity rate of about 4%. Broward saw 181 new cases in the last 24 hours with a positivity rate of 2.7%. And overall in Florida, the state is reporting nearly 3,000 new cases with a positivity rate of about 4%. We have some sad news tonight from the Seminole Tribe of Florida. The tribe announcing that longtime representative Max Osceola Jr. passed away from COVID-19. Osceola had been hospitalized previously for the virus and had warned all to take it very seriously. Max Osceola Jr. was 70 years old. And developing now major movement in the COVID release talks. Will there be another stimulus check in your mailbox? Plus, Louisiana bracing for another hurricane. The very latest live from the storm zone ahead on World News Tonight at 630. And bogus Benjamins, the county counterfeit cash so real looking that even banks are fooled bad bird the loose emu that was chasing families around a florida neighborhood 
But first, Pony Express. This story has a very happy ending here, and we're coming right back. Well, tonight, police are warning businesses about bogus Benjamins out there. Fake $100 bills are popping up in several cities across North Florida. The counterfeit cash looks so real that even banks are having trouble spotting them. The fake bills even pass the pen test, which businesses use to spot counterfeits. Business owners say this scheme couldn't come at a worse time as they are already struggling because of the pandemic. And out of 2020, and we're seeing a surge in mail-in ballots. More than 1.3 million have been returned across the state. In Broward, more than 121,000 have been returned since the county mailed them out in late September. And in Miami-Dade, more than 68,000 have been returned. The county sent off those ballots a week after Broward. Well, cruising is on the ballot in Key West. Voters will be asked if they want to ban cruise ships. And proponents say it would benefit the environment, but opponents argue it will hurt business is already suffering from the pandemic. Local 10 News reporter Christina Vasquez has the debate. <laughs> In a city still reeling from the economic impacts of COVID-19, roosters seem to outnumber tourists on a recent weekday afternoon. <laughs> In the stillness of pedicab drivers waiting for passengers and already shuttered businesses amid this pandemic, a heated debate brewing among residents. And this was nothing more than a way to ban all cruise ships. We've recently seen big examples of health problems on cruise ships. This November, Key West voters will decide on three cruise-related charter amendments. One gives priority to cruise lines with the best environmental and health records. It's the next two that are the main source for discord, limiting the number of people who can disembark to 1,500 a day and restricting the size of cruise ships allowed to call by prohibiting those with a capacity of 1,300 or more from disembarking. Opponents call it a big ship ban. 
proponents concede it would be a very small ship. Concerned with environmental impacts and the spread of COVID-19, Key West homeowner Mark Songer of the organization Last Stand. We've been around for 33 years and we deal with quality of life and environmental issues. Supports the charter amendments backed by the Key West Committee for Safer Cleaner Ships, which if passed by design would drastically scale back the cruise ship industry. The cruise ships will sit here for eight to 10 hours a day and they still run their engines and you can see the plume over the islands. If this referendum passes and it passes judicial scrutiny, it will devastate the economy in Key West. That's Michael Halpern of the legendary Southernmost House. These are original Hemingway letters. He is firmly opposed to the charter amendments that would impact tourism revenue, he says, from cruise ship visitors who spend their few hours on the island visiting its shops. It is named the cleaner, safer cruise ships, but of course it bars the cleanest, safest cruise ships on earth from coming into Key West. That is a reference to recent investments in green technologies by some cruise liners. But Songer says he can't help but to notice that since cruise ships have suspended operations amid the pandemic, the air and water appear clearer. The cruise ship traffic up and down the channel disturbs the sediments on the bottom. The city of Key West says they had about a million cruise ship passengers in 2019, about half of their total visitors based on a 2018 study. We're trying to be uh, very honest about the economic impacts as well as the environmental and health and safety impacts. And it's a tough place for people to balance. There is a balance that would be beneficial to this community. This referendum doesn't bring balance. This referendum crushes our community's opportunity to have cleaner, safer cruise ships. And the conversation doesn't end here. We have so much more for you on Local10.com. In Key West, Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Thank you, Christina. Caught on camera here, a pony riding in the back seat of a truck on the highway, and it turns out it was stolen. We're told the pet pony was taken from Southwest Miami-Dade this morning and then sold to someone for $600. The man who bought the animal contacted the owner and agreed to return the pony, who, by the way, belongs to a five-year-old girl. Okay, all right, and speaking of animals, you don't want to miss Wild Florida today. <laughs> the emu emergency that had people running from this wild bird, that's next.
Wild Florida tonight making us smile just a bit tonight. Check out this wild bird running down a neighborhood street in Jacksonville. The emu somehow escaping its owner's property and started chasing people. Wildlife officers responded and used nets to wrangle the emu, which doesn't fly, of course, but it can run. Did you know this? 30 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Okay. All right. It's faster than I am. <laughs> Way faster than I am. We smiled about our weather today. Betty it was yeah. nice. And now we've got this cloud hanging over the Magic City. You see that through the lens of our Mount Sinai Medical Center tower camera. And that's sort of a telltale sign of what we can expect at times this weekend and even tonight. No rain measured so far out at MIA, but we'll see if we change that up uh, before we put a wrap on this Friday. Our high temperature, by the way, was 89. Our low was 81, so we're running above normal. East southeast winds at 11 miles per hour, and with that wind flow, the showers that we do see over the Atlantic waters, those will be heading in our direction tonight. Here's one area of downpours. It's going to be moving in. You can already see a shower out ahead of that main uh, area of rain approaching in Key Biscayne. Uh, this is going to cross over to Biscayne Bay and some of that probably coming in around places like uh, Coral Gables eventually, Cutler Bay, and we'll keep an eye on those skies in downtown Miami too. So the bottom line on the forecast, showers around for the evening, later tonight, still the possibility of some showers. While we've got just a few showers coming through here, there's a hurricane uh, making landfall, and that landfall starting as we speak right here along the southwest Louisiana coast. This is Hurricane Delta, all the rain associated with it. At this point, the gauges that we've got posted that aren't necessarily showing any impressive rain gusts, but trust it is blowing really well right around southwest Louisiana where that northern eye wall came ashore. And just look at how that rain just extends all the way up toward Alexandria, touching Monroe, Louisiana as well. So that system continues to move ashore overnight into tomorrow. It interacts with land, so it weakens. But on Saturday, still tropical storm conditions moving up through portions of the Mid-South, at least northern Louisiana. The story for us, though, Tomorrow, southeast winds and scattered showers out there. We'll get some afternoon thunderstorms popping up on Sunday. And make sure you've got the weather app to stay on top of the weather. Guys. Okay, and we will. Thanks a lot, Betty. We thank you for watching. We'll see you again tonight at 11 o'clock. Anything you missed, you can find on our website, local10.com. World News Tonight is next. Have a good night. This is a Local 10 editorial with WPLG President Bert Medina. Mail-in voting has become a political fight, but it works, and there's no evidence to suggest otherwise. In fact, we proved the opposite during the August primaries. South Floridians voted by mail in record numbers, and it went smoothly. It's safe and effective, especially during a global pandemic. If you want to vote by mail, it's time to request your ballot. Contact the Office of the Supervisor of Elections in your county to request a ballot. Your last chance to make that request is October 24th. Fill it out and return it immediately, but no later than 7 p.m. on election night. You can also avoid issues with the mail and drop your ballot off at early voting locations or other drop-off locations in each county. You can find those on local10.com. No matter how you do it, cast your ballot. Of course, this is just the beginning of the conversation. Let's continue it on local10.com. This has been a Local 10 editorial. We encourage the presentation of contrasting points of view.